Srbi, mi smo pasanci. Ne pije si ti na jebola! Decentralized Pictures Talent Cast. I am Matt. That is Sabina, writer, director of the award winning film Variables and finalist for the DCP Short Film Award. Thanks so much for being on the show, Sabina. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so let, let, let's kick it off. So, tell us a little bit about yourself and your history of being a filmmaker. Sure. So I was born in Bosnia um, and my family fled during the war and ended up as refugees in the United States. And I was initially a theater director. I, I made a big announcement to my family I was going to be a film director when I was about eight years old. Um, but then the war took its thing and I kind of ran around way. I ended up in theater and fell in love with it. And decided to pursue that as my first, uh, my undergrad degree and moved to New York um, and did first sort of classical theater and then switched, le switched to um, like experimental off of Broadway, avant-garde, fun stuff, you know, that no one really understands, but everyone has a lot of fun doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and somewhere along in that period, um, my family got an opportunity to return to Bosnia and reclaim the property that we were forced to leave when we were fleeing for our lives. And, um, and I decided to just go with them. I read a book about how to make movies. <laughs> and uh, in the book, it says hire a cinematographer, somebody who knows how to use a camera. So I did that. And that was a very smart decision um, and ended up with a feature documentary um, called Back to Bosnia that effectively launched my film career, uh, even though it still took me a few years to fully switch from theater to film, because I didn't really trust it. Like I, I liked theater, I liked the community, I liked um, all the elements of it and film seemed so um, isolating and I wasn't eager to jump into it quite yet. Um, but after a while, I, I guess I like the permanence of film, you know, in theater, you make a you, you direct a play, you put your soul on stage and after a month, two months, you know, it's over and people just talk about it. Uh, but with film, you can make it and years later, someone can watch it and uh, still be moved by it. And I kind of, in a very um, narcissistic way, wanted to have a bigger impact on the world. <laughs> so ended up in film. Great. Excellent. Well, th well thank you for that background. And and so, so now we're going to talk about your film, Variables, and obviously a, a very personal story. You just mentioned that you and your family had to flee from Bosnia, and, and so this, this, this story is centered around that topic that, that happened in the mid-90s. So, so tell us, walk us through that story and uh, how you adapted real-life events into the screenplay. Sure. So Variables, as an idea, came across... Uh, my desk, if you want to put it that way, about 15 years ago, because um, I have a close friend from my hometown, a Bosnian friend, who was studying at MIT at the time, and he came to visit me in New York City and brought a friend of his along, who was also Bosnian, but I didn't know. And so as it always happens with us Bosnians, when we first meet one another, the first, it's like in America, they ask, you know, what do you do for a living for us? It's like, how did you escape the war? <laughs> like that's, that's our like light conversation topic. Um, and so Radosh, my friend's friend, tells me his story uh, that I was completely shocked by. I just didn't, I never heard of a story like that. Usually it's like, oh, you know, my parents got me out or, we went to Germany first, or we, you know, it's like kind of a similar trajectories, but his was very unique. And, and that kind of put him back in my mind. I was like, okay, one day I'm going to tackle this. And, um, and then I was getting my um, master's degree at USC, and they wanted us to tell very personal stories. And since I've already told the story of my own family and what happened to us with that documentary, Back to Bosnia, I started thinking, well, I still want to tell a story that's personal to me, but perhaps more universal. It's it's a broader subject matter. And then I remembered Radish's story. And um, and I thought, okay, that's really 
that could work. And um, and it was also part of a grant for Sloan Foundation, and they're looking for subject matters that are STEM based. And since it's a story about a math whiz, I figured that could be a good um, opportunity for me to apply for that particular grant. And so I sat down, and the story is, it, I mean, the plot of the film is true. I mean, I changed a lot of the characters and um, some, you know, the internal stuff, but um, in a real story. So Radish was a kid. He was a 14 year old kid, a math whiz mm-hmm. in, but in Sarajevo during the war. And the way, the way he puts it, the way he survived is by relying on math because nothing else made sense. You know, all of a sudden, like the world as he knew it, just erupted and collapsed around him and so he relied on math to stay alive and um his math club that was meeting in the war zone under bombs and under everything uh won a national competition in math and was then pulled out by with the help of un to go and compete in the international math olympiad in canada and um and then when he was there he won a bronze medal and um To me, that was just incredible. I mean, who pulls out a bunch of kids of a war zone to go and compete in a math Olympiad? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like we're not pulling them out to save them. We're pulling them out just because there was this competition. (laughs) Like, you know, I don't know. It just seemed random and ridiculous, something out of Monty Python. (laughs) Uh, But but it really happened. And um, and the one thing that I did change. So in real life, Radosh and his friends returned to Bosnia after the competition, which also in itself, if you think about it, they're returning them back to the war zone where they might get killed. So his right. bronze medal, like who cares? But I changed it to where, um, well, spoiler alert, uh, where they stay in um, Canada because I wanted to tie in uh, a personal element of mine because in my case, I was the first one to come out uh, of my family out of Bosnia and I was on my own for about a year before my family can, my mom and my brother can join me. And um, I wanted to put a little portrayal of that part of a refugee experience because I think it's rarely seen, you know, that kids are kind of left on their own. And I was writing and making this film during the whole separation of kids and families at the border. And I really wanted to uh, focus on that because that was my experience and how harrowing, even though you're safe, it can be that the rest of your family isn't and you don't know whether or not you'd ever see them again. What an incredible story. So what were, what were some of the challenges and, and lessons learned during, during production? Well, I guess the biggest challenge for us was that we didn't have the money to go to Bosnia to make it. And so we had to recreate 1990s war-torn Bosnia in Los Angeles. Right. Um, and, and so... <laughs> Uh, my producers and I would just, I think we spent probably two months before we even started filming, just driving around the entire Los Angeles area, trying to find something that could possibly pass that we could make look like. And um, that was, that was definitely the biggest challenge. And I'm, I'm very happy to say that we managed to conquer it. I mean, I feel like a lot of people are surprised when I tell them we shot it all in LA. Um, and I would say the, you know, of course, the second biggest was trying to find um, teenagers in America who speak Bosnian, um, because even though there are half a million Bosnian Americans who, who came here during the war, uh, most of their kids just learned English. And that's a separate um, sad story um, that to me, it's sad that we are not um, making sure that our next generation continues with the language and the culture. It's another way of, of erasure of, um, of who we are, but that's a separate conversation. But that was, that was a difficult thing, trying to find these kids um, who not only speak Bosnian, but can act. I mean, all the, mm-hmm. all the kids that I cast ended up not being actors. They've never acted before. And so. You uh, could have maybe... fooled me. They were brilliant. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I was, I was, <laughs> You know, and like, and they've never, not only have they never acted, but they've never even auditioned, you know, so they don't even oh. know this wasn't their world. And so I had to just trust my gut. I mean, I basically cast the entire film off of my gut, just being like, I think this kid can do it. Let's give it a try and see what happens. Um, and I think that's going back to your question about the biggest um, 
um, uh, biggest thing that I got out of this is to go with the flow. I think mm -hmm. it's really hard for us as you know filmmakers to just be like, well, I have my vision and it has to be that way and has to be that way. And then the film usually wants to do what it wants to do. And this was the film that taught me to just trust the process and trust it's going to work out for the best, even if it isn't the way I envisioned it. All right. And then you have, was it your cinematographer that advised you that, okay, we're working with non-actors here and the, the, the actors may miss their mark and we just have mm -hmm. to just go with it and, yeah. and adapt, adapt accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, you know, of course I was like, oh, we're going to have dollies. Right. I mean, which of course my producer was like, how the hell are we going to afford that? But, you know, I was like, <laughs> I had all these ideas. I was coming out of film school. Give me a break, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then my cinema, to my director of photography, Eugene Ko, she said, you know, I don't know that this kid is going to, does, he doesn't even know what the mark is. And, you know, by the end of the filming, he knew, but we started, our first scene that we shot was him running through the sniper alley. And she was like, I can't, you know, we have to adjust to him. It can't be the other way around. And, um, and I don't know, I think the film is better for it. So that's another, you know, it's like, you got to listen to everybody around you and you have to trust the process. Indeed. So I want to, I want to zero in on your screenwriting skills now. So in the original script, there was planned to have three teenagers leaving Bosnia. Um, there was a shakeup in the cast that required some rewrites. So tell us about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the original, in, in Radish's story, it was five of them, I want to say, but I thought, okay, five is too much for a short film for me to develop each of those characters. But I was like, I could do three, you know, mm -hmm. that seemed reasonable. And I gave each of them a specific type of uh, personality. And, uh, but like I said, it was hard finding uh, teenagers who spoke Bosnian. So we kind of did a cast search throughout the United, United States. It was like, okay, where can we find anybody who could, you know, possibly do this? And so, um, the lead actor, Harris, came from Florida, as was this other actor who was going to be in the scene with three kids, uh, was also coming from Florida. And Harris already made it there and we're making, we're already second day in a filming when the, the second kid was supposed to come. And I kid you not, um, so we're on set, we're finishing filming. The next day, the kid's supposed to be on set and we get a phone call at 5 p.m. that they're not going to make it that his parents changed their mind. They don't want to come to California. They don't want to do this. I don't know what happened because, you know, it's like when you're dealing with people who don't really make movies, who don't understand movies, they don't understand what a big problem this is. They're like, oh, just find somebody else. Like, you know, there's plenty of kids in, in LA. You could just have somebody else. I was like, you don't understand. It took me six months to find your son. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't solve this. And like, it's 5 p.m. And I'm on set, you know, we're, we're filming and I just get a text that I don't check until between setups. So now between setups, I check the text that says we're not coming. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I can't have a meltdown because we still have two more hours of, to go. So I just hand it to my producer. I was like, you handle it. I don't know. And, um, and we, had, we finished for the day and it's 7 PM. And sure enough, they didn't get on a plane. They're not coming. And my producer tried to find somebody else. We can't find somebody else. And, by the time I get, and we're supposed to film tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. And so by the time I get home, I'm a mess. You know, I'm sobbing, I'm quitting. This is it. Like the <laughs> film is over. It's never going to happen. And, uh, and you know, and again, Eugene, my, my, my cinematographer, my director of photography, she's like, you know, um, what do you need? You know, and I said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. She was like, okay. I'm just going to leave you alone because we're sharing an apartment. She was like, I'm just going to leave you alone. And she just goes out and I just, I cry and drink whiskey and cry <laughs> <laughs> and have a complete meltdown. Like I said, it's like I quit everything five times over. And then I calm down and, uh, and she comes back like an hour later. Um, and she's like, okay, what did you decide? And I said, I'm rewriting the script. And then she said, okay. Well, you know, because she's like, whatever you decide, we're with you. And I said, no, 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 it's it's unfair to this film. It's unfair to this story for me to just because, you know, this kid had like three whole scenes that I now suddenly could no longer film. And I had to restructure the entire film in five hours, you know. And mm -hmm. so I stayed up all night and kept writing and rewriting and rewriting and trying to get the same 
uh, message and the same sense and the same everything for the main character because I also didn't want to throw this kid off because he's not a professional actor. He memorized his lines mm -hmm. and I'm going to show up the next day and be like, okay, so, you know, um, so I, yeah, so I showed up the next morning. I think I finished the pages at three in the morning and at seven we were on set and I walk up to the, the now the two teenagers, Harris and the other, the girl. And I was like, okay, here are new pages. And they panic. I see like, they just, the girl started crying. She's like, I, I can't memorize this. And I said, okay, then we're going to improvise. We're just going to, this was the scene when he finds out they're going to Canada in this, in the school. And uh, I said, and I really, but who, who saved me was Mira Furlan, who was, who played their teacher, who is an incredible, incredible actress from back home. Uh, sadly passed away a couple of years ago um but she just stepped up and said okay and she just fed them lines and fed them things so they could just sort of do the line she took over most of the dialogue that the, the other kid was going to say and so by the time we got to the, the other scenes in a hotel room I had time to work with the with the young actors so they aren't as panicked about it but it was it was quite a challenge and once again you just kind of you know you plan for everything and then you know Life has different plans. <laughs> exactly. And it, and it all worked out. Amazing. It all worked out. Yeah. And in a way, like, I think it's a better film for it. You know, like, I think it's, it's, it's tighter. It's more succinct. And um, I think it worked out. Really, it worked out for the best. Wonderfully stated. So, so Variables has been featured at quite a few film festivals, a lot of recognition. And so, so what was your incentive? What was your desire to approach the Decentralized Pictures platform to have variables featured um well i found out about i don't even know i think i got a it was in one of the newsletters or something and i clicked on it and quite honestly i was a little confused because i was like whoa what is this like mm -hmm. you know and then once i figured it out i was like oh this is fascinating it's basically mm -hmm. you know like a, it's not a film festival but it's like a film competition mm -hmm. for filmmakers by filmmakers and for once you're being judged by your peers as opposed to somebody who's never made a film before and they're just judging off of their taste which there is a validity to that too but like i just i thought that to me it's much more powerful and it means much more to me if another filmmaker watches what i've made and and because we know what it takes to make a movie we know how hard it is and everything that we put on the line. And so that part really appealed to me. I thought this is such a unique opportunity. And also the film, you know, sure, it, it did the festival rounds and all that, but it was a lot of it was during the pandemic. So I didn't really get to go to any of these places and get to meet other filmmakers. And I didn't really get to see how the audience reacted. And, you know, and so in a way it was kind of a, even though it, went to a lot of festivals it was kind of a limited release if you want to say it because it was just small small communities and so this was an opportunity to showcase it to a much lar larger community an untapped community that i didn't really have access to before so all of that was just way too good to pass up and i just thought okay well i'll just put it up and see what happens and then really you know hope for the best but i i entered the competition pretty late in the game and there were other films that were really really excellent that i watched and i was like well okay i mean if the best thing that comes out of this is that you know a couple hundred more people see this film like i'll be very very grateful um and then you know getting a second place was just incredible i was like wow okay well this is the power of this movie you know <laughs> i didn't you know it's like it's, it's it's like you're a proud parent right you know your <laughs> your kids just won you know a medal and you're like yay <laughs> <laughs> so so moving forward so you've been recognized now by decentralized pictures kind of by the greater film three community so 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 what's next and how can this space continue to help filmmakers like you um, I think that everything you guys are doing so far is extremely helpful. And also, I mean, not to, you know, say, I mean, we're all making art because we're artists and we're making art because we love art and all that. But it's also really nice to be paid for that, to win an award that's actual money or, you mm -hmm. know, that isn't just, you know, a plaque you put on a wall. I mean, that's great. I, I love them, but that's a nice ego boost. But this actually helps uh, chase off your landlord off your doorstep saying, <laughs> where's my rent, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I think that's really, it's remarkable and I've not seen it anywhere else. And that's sort of a support, not just in like cheering us on and giving us an opportunity to meet one another and share our work with one another, but to also 
financially support us is is quite unbelievable and, and um i commend you for it and i thank you from the bottom of my filmmaker heart for doing that <laughs> <laughs> well i wish i could take credit but i just do the podcast so um yeah but i, I, I will off. share i will share that sentiment <laughs> with the with the leadership of dcp so that's that, yeah. that's great to hear that it's it's making a difference so ex exciting days ahead as well yeah definitely so, all right, so Sabina, that, that wraps up my core questions, but we've got to wrap up with something fun here called Matt's Speed Round. And so just have a few questions for you. Don't overthink them and just throw out the first thing that comes to mind, okay? Sure. All right, so the top tip for first-time directors. Trust your crew. All right, all right. But I mean, yes, it, I just mean like, Hire people that you trust and then trust them once you're on the set instead of micromanaging. Beautiful, beautiful. Delegation's key. All right. So your favorite, you've been recognized at some different film festivals. What's your favorite film festival? Okay, I'm going to be sentimental and say Sarajevo Film Festival, which is back home. And, you know, there's just something special about being, showing my movies um, in that environment. Understandable. Absolutely. Uh, favorite part about making films? The ability to share with the world some of the hardships that I've endured and seen people endure in order. So I'm hoping that the movies that I make can help others get through their troubles easier. Wonderful. All right, final question. Something about Bosnia very few people know. <laughs> uh, I think where it is on a map. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's simple as that. <laughs> all right, all right. Everybody should go study their globe and you know and have a better understanding of the real location of Bosnia. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Well, Sabina, this was a real treat. I uh, really enjoyed our conversation today, and and best of luck with uh, with variables and uh, and other projects that you're working on. Um, um, obviously a lot of talent here and uh, look forward to seeing uh, what you create in the future. Thank you so much. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be a part of this and what a fun interview. Thank you very, very much. Awesome. We'll see you around. <laughs>